Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Eric Nord. I am the uh, North American API practice lead for Axway. So today we're going to go through some virtualization of uh, events here. Let me figure out how to share my screen. Okay. So um, let's kick this off right away and let's go ahead and let's talk about what we're going to do. So just, I don't have many slides. Most of this is just going to be me doing something. Um, so what we have here and feel free please to ask questions as we're going. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at APIs and how to virtualize API, how to virtualize your corporate APIs using Axway. So of course we're looking at the base API call. A consumer is invoking a service on a provider, and then what we're going to do is we're going to plug in API management into this call where you're going to have a consumer. Actually, first we're going to create the provider and we're going to create the back end provider inside of Axway man API management. And then we're going to expose it as a front end proxy that will be consumed by a consuming application that wants to use said API. So if we get right into this, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by our virtualization. So inside of my image here, after you get installed, uh, installing the, all the Axway products, what you're going to have is you're going to have API Manager. Um, inside of API Manager, we're going to go ahead and log in. Um, and here we're using a default user, which is API admin, uh, with his password. So when we first come in with um, your API manager, you're going to first come into APIs. Uh, just a quick overlook of this, of course, we can define backends and define frontends. We can manage our clients. So all of the clients here will, will uh, we, we can create organizations. So we can control which organizations users get into. Uh, we can create everybody as application developers. Uh, this is our back system. So everybody is going to be in a specific role based off of the organization that they're in. We can look at applications and then some OAuth and default quotas. Default quotas we'll get into here a little bit later. And then we do come with some metrics that you can see, we, your application usage, APIs, um, and then of course our, our settings that come with. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with virtualizing our API. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new backend API and we wanna import this Swagger definition, but you can also see that we do support Waddles and, Riz and, and Wizzles that you can import. You can either upload a file or today what I'll do is I'm gonna to go to a URL and my URL is a running, uh, a running API that I have on this image. And here you can see the swagger that defines this uh, API. So if we copy this URL and we paste this into our our API manager, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this guy, just so I can name it properly. We're gonna name it OMS, Order Management System, and then I'll just give it a version 2020 for API Days 2020. And we will go ahead and we will create this in our API development organization. And then all I do is I click Import. So now what happens is this API has been imported into our backend as an API. 
And what we see is we see the definition of the API. So on this first page here, you'll, you'll see that it has a base path, a resource path, the version and everything. And this is all pulled from the Swagger file that we have created over here. Then if we look at our API methods, same case here is it read, it read the Swagger file and found the different paths here and the different methods that are created for each one. And then what it did was it created these methods for us. So you can see we have a read and a submit methods that are that you can call on this API. And then if you've defined any any models, schema mod, JSON schema models, um, it would pull that in to here and, 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 and show you what that looks like here. Okay, so now we can move on and we can um, start creating our front end API. So the proxy, our proxy for that back end API. And we wanna do a new API and we can do a new API from the backend API. So it finds the API that we just created and we say, okay. Okay, so we're gonna start out first. It, you can see that it generates this front end API for us. What we're gonna do is first we wanna change our resource path and we're going to change that to be the uh, the name of the API that we just created. And then we want to also for our inbound security, uh, just for showing what's going on here first, we can create this as a pass through. So basically an open API that anybody can call and anybody's gonna have access to this API uh, and then we can go ahead and save this API. This API is now ready to ready to be used. We can go out to our out, out to the browser here and we can call this API and every API by default uh, that we create inside of API Manager is going to be exposed on our 8065 listener. So out here, and then I've provided the address uh, to the API that we just created, and I want to make a call. And in here, what I'm doing is I'm asking the, the order management system to look up order 123123. So you can see here, that I got my JSON response back, my status was okay, and delivery on time for this for this service was true. Okay, so now we we've we've got our API working. So now let's go ahead and publish our API. So back inside of API Manager, we're going to find our OMS service. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select our select our OMS service, and then from our drop down here, we want to go ahead and say publish. And once you when you publish your API, what you can do is you can actually change the virtual host, right? So for instance, if if you're in a clustered environment, you have multiple nodes of API manager running, you're gonna have your uh, a load balancer running in front of those API managers. So maybe at this point here is when you wanna add some kind of, some, what the virtual host is coming into that load balancer that you want your runtime users using. Uh, right now for today, I just have a single node in this, so we won't use a virtual host. So now, oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. What I wanna do is I wanna actually change the, I'm gonna change the security now, and I'm gonna change the security to using an API key. So here what we're doing is we're setting up the API key and we're naming this key ID 
and we're expecting this on the request headers, but you can also do this as a query string form from the body. So here we'll say, okay. Then we're gonna go to our API and we're going to give this an image. And then let's give this a tag. Tags are useful because this allows um, when, when developers are out looking for services, or not services, for APIs, um, they can use tags to find out, find the proper API that they want to use for their use case. Okay, so now I've gotten all of that done. So now I want to go ahead and I will save my API. Now we can go ahead and publish the API now that I've created the right uh, the, the right security in for here. And now I can say publish with my virtual host. Now we'll create our quotas. And we come into here, our default quota. First one we're going to do is we're going to create a system quota. We'll add our API to here. And what we're gonna say is we wanna throttle and only allow 300 messages every second. And we go ahead and save this, this, and then we'll say application default, and we'll add again our API over here. And what we wanna do is we're gonna throttle application specific for three message, messages every one second. And then we can go ahead and save this guy. Okay, so now it's time to get access into this API. So let's talk about access. So back over to my quick little presentation here. So now if we go into the next slide, um, what our access lets you do, is that kind of small? Uh, what my access, what, what our access lets us do is uh, grant access to people that are using this. So by default, when we set up an API, there your API is is uh, worked in and, and built in a specific organization, right? So for our instance, for our case here, what we've done is we've built inside of our organization, inside of API development, that's where we saved the API at. So by default, what happens is anybody that is already associated with that organization, they automatically get access into any API that is also in that organization. So for our case here, uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing four APIs, right? API one and two are in organization one and API three and four are in organization two. Uh, user A has access to these APIs that are in their organization, same case for user B. But that doesn't always necessarily the way that we want to do it. By building APIs, we want to be able to give access to other users in other organizations per se, right? So then what we're going to do is we want to start out by granting access to users. So what we do here now is we're gonna take our API, so in this case, API two, and we're gonna grant access to organization two. So now what happens is organization two, you, all the users, for in this case, user B, can now see and get access for API two. Okay, so let's put this in action now. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our API. And we're going to select our API that's already published. But now what we want to do is we want to grant access for this API. OK. So what you have is you have three options of when you're granting access. You can grant access to all organizations, which then makes it some kind of, uh, you know, a common API that other people are, uh, that everybody can see and use. Um, you can grant access to the following organizations, uh, which is going to show you a list of organizations, and then you can add the, organi add the organizations that you want to grant access to. Or you can also use, and another API, maybe there's another API that's in your organization already um, that has went through and granted it all to all of the proper, to the proper organizations. So what you can do is you can then choose that API and you can mimic the access to that, to this API that you're working on. So for our case, we're gonna do it to the following organizations. Okay, so here we get the drop down, and we see all of our other organizations out there that we can grant access to it. In our case, we're going to choose partners, and then we're going to go ahead and say OK. And then we can see that we've successfully granted access uh, to the partners organization to our API. OK. So our last step here is we're going to get access to this API. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out to our API portal. Uh, this is for consumers mainly. Um, uh, mainly we've exposed this externally, but we are seeing more and more clients that are also exposing this portal internally. Um, so this is a CMS. And we're gonna go ahead and sign in as our user. This is backed by LDAP. And I have a user in LDAP named Dave with a strong password of Dave. And we'll go ahead and sign in. And then we first come through, we come to applications. If we click over on APIs now, what we see is we see all of the APIs that have been granted to Dave, and Dave is in the partner organization. So if we come back over to our clients and we look at application developers and we look at Dave, we can see that the organization that he is part of is the, is the partner organization, okay? So if we go ahead and take a look at our order management system, we click into here. What we're seeing now is you're seeing, first of all, you're, you're seeing your download definitions and your client SDK. So here you can see that I can, I can download an open API spec of, of what the Swagger looks like there. And you can also download some default SDKs for you iOS, Titanium, Android, Node.js, which will then download that SDK for you so that you can start working on this right away. Or you could start working on this with your application code that you need to do as a consumer. You can see here now in the authorization point, you can see that it's telling us that an API key is, is required and we need to create an application to access this API. Okay, um, it tells us the address and then down, if we scroll down, you can see the two methods that were defined in the swagger that we imported, right? So if we go ahead and click on one of these swaggers or methods, so now you can see that it does give us a nice little place to try it out. Um, we need to add a, what, our, a, what would go into this Git. Um, and then we can also click on the post and we can see, and we can try out the post if we want. So first we need to create an application to get access to this guy here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna create a new application and we will call this application API days. 
You can give it a description, email, and of course, we want to make sure that we're enabling this application. So here it shows us all of the APIs that we have access to in our organization. So we want to make sure that here we're selecting our OMS system here. And then what we can do is we can save and add authentication. Remember, we need to have that API key to be able to call this API. Okay, so here we're gonna come into our API keys and we will go ahead and we will generate our API key for this user, which then go ahead, it generates the API as we want to see it. Um, and then, of course, you can always come in and view your secret key if and when you need your secret key. Uh, you can also set up OAuth credentials and any other external credentials that you that you might need. So now we're ready to go ahead and test this API. So if we come in and we go back to our APIs. So here now we can see our test the API. So now when we say test the API, it brings us back into this API, but this time it sees that we have an application that is set up to invoke this API. So now we can say, try it out. We'll do the git and we'll say, try it out. And then we'll say, we'll give it our order number again, just like we did earlier. And then here, we'll go ahead and say execute. Okay. So our execute went through. And what we could see now is we show you the curl command that was actually sent to the API. And this was the requesting URL that we sent out to. And then on our response, you can see that we got back the same response that we got in our browser earlier. So you can see here, here's the, here's the, um, here's the JSON that we got back. Um, if we take a look at the raw data, this is what the JSON looks like. And you see that it looks exactly the same as what we got back from our API when we invoked our API through portal. And then you can also see all of the response headers that came back and the response uh, stata, the re response codes that you could have gotten back. And in this case, we did get our 200 back. Okay, let's go ahead. And we can also go ahead and execute this a few other times. And you'll see that this continue works. Um, we've, we could run this against a, um, let's go and let's change our default quota. So we have three minutes every second. Let's do three calls every second. And the nice thing with using API Manager is whenever you do anything inside of API Manager, this is saved down into a Cassandra database. And this makes it immediately available. There's no deployments, no nothing like that that are required. So if everything works right. And it's not. Imagine that. It's not calling fast enough, so you can see. Let's try to lower this to one message. All 
Okay, I can't get that to call fast enough to hit that throttle. Okay. Okay, so that's our virtualizing an API using uh, using Axway management cloud, the using the tools through API management. Um, API management, our, our tooling also comes with what we like to call Policy Studio. Okay. Policy Studio is what we use to configure the gateway and to create custom policies, right? So what we can what we can do in here is when we generated and managed our API, our front end API, if we unpublish this guy and we come back into here, what we could have done here is we had an invoke policy, right? So then if we selected this, what we could have done was come in here and invoke, invoke a specific policy. That specific policy is maintained and managed over here. So basically if, if you can't find a proper security, uh, a proper security method that comes out of the box, um, say you're using a proprietary security method or something, you're going against a proprietary database, right? Then you can come into Policy Studio and inside of your policies here, you can actually create a, um, a specific policy that goes there. So let's close this. And let's open a new project. And again, I'll call this API days. And I'm just gonna call our quick start out here, which is what we kind of deploy as a POC environment. And then we will let this download everything. Okay, so now we have our configuration, and as you can see by default, uh, we've we've created already some listeners that are out here, right? And the 8065 traffic was uh, coming across this listener, um, and then we have server configure server settings, right? Um, so we set up our this uh, this is where we can set up our Cassandra, um, but then we can set up our inside of API manager, we can set up our inbound security policies, right? So these are what are going to be shown when I come to this step and edit my invoke policies, okay? So what you can do here now is we could come in and we could create a, a mock poli uh, a policy here, right? Just says API days. And what it gives us is it gives us a workspace here, and then we have a bunch of filters over here. So if I say message, so so here I can start doing things like setting a message, right? So here I want to say yeah, JSON, and then I can actually put the message in what I want to. And this can all be parameterized, so this can be changed from environment to environment if need be. And then we go ahead and say finish that, and we can say set as start. And now I can go back to my server settings here, and I can say add. my API days policy and save this. So then whenever I do changes here, I actually need to do a deployment 
back out to my server. And in the process that it's doing this, it is actually, it, it does restart that server. Uh, everything that I've done is also on GitHub. Um, so it can be recreated except for the backend service, of course. If you want to try this on your own, I will put this in the chat. And I'm not sure if the chat is shared. So I will also put it here in the presentation. Okay, jump back over here. If we can see that the deployment was successful. So now when we come back over to our API manager, we're going to have to re-log into our API manager because the server was restarted. And if we come back into our front end API, and we find our OMS service again, come into this, we can now change our front end security to be an invoke policy. And here now you can see that it does see the API days that we created. Um, not going to run this because it'll break. Um, I shouldn't. Um, and then we can also do this for outbound, uh, outbound um, policies, right? So you can now have advanced. You can also do request and response policies, right? So these would be policies that you're going to do before you want to call a backend service. So, for instance, maybe you're doing a REST to SOAP transformation. Uh, you're, you're first going to need to, when the REST message comes in from the consumer, you need to take that REST message and transform that into a SOAP, SOAP envelope and then pass that SOAP envelope back to your backend SOAP service. And then it does its work and sends back the response. Well, at the same time here, this is where you're going to need to take that response, take out only the fields that you need out of that SOAP envelope, put it back into a REST message to send back to your consumer. Okay, um, anybody have any questions on what I've went through? Anything at all?
that's all I had to talk about here. I haven't there. I don't see any chat in the session. No questions. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, I think I can I think there's a way I'm supposed to be able to bring you into a talk. Um, okay, so if you want to use Amplify, are you talking about our SaaS model? That's up in the cloud? Okay, um, so you can, um, so what you can do is you can expose your, your services that are running, say, in an on-prem model and using our API manager and API gateway that's running and you're on-prem, and then you can actually expose that up through your SaaS environment. So people can find it through there, but when they actually make uh, invoke to your API, then it's actually going to call API Manager slash Gateway that's running in your on-prem environment. Uh, API Manager is just a plugin that kind of sits on top of our API Gateway. The API Gateway is really the nuts and bolts of, of that does all the work. Does that answer your question? You don't have to use it, right? So Amplify also has its own gateway that's that's running in the SaaS environment. So if you're if you want to deploy services in say a cloud, you could just expose them through your SaaS gateway that's running in the cloud. And that's different than API Manager and API Gateway. It's a, it's a different server. Uh, On-prem, yeah, uh, they, it doesn't tie to other, uh, it, it doesn't tie to other, um, other gateways like MuleSoft or anything like that. Now there, we are looking at in our SaaS Amplify, where you can expose, per se, MuleSoft services running on-prem through Amplify. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be available, um, but I know that is one of the things that they they are looking at for that. But in this here, API Manager and API Gateway go hand to hand. Now I've worked with clients that have, for say, MuleSoft services running that are exposed through our API gateway and manager. Did that answer your questions? Okay. Anybody else have any questions? We've got 10 minutes left. So I see people are joining.
Um, in essence, yes, they could if you wanted to share it. Uh, my opinion, my recommendation is you shouldn't. Um, in development, yes. Uh, production, you know, they, they should go out and get their own OAuth token uh, to make calls to multiple APIs. It just depends on how you're setting up your security rules and if you allow multiple developers. The problem with allowing multiple developers is you don't know who's really using that API now, right? Since so multiple APIs, if each, if each developer had their own application with their own OAuth token, so now when I start looking at my metrics and stuff, I can now see which developers with which applications are making calls out to my API. When you start laying down and setting up your security and policies and everything like that, that's uh, that's a decision that you guys will have to have to decide on how you want to deal with your OAuth tokens. But like I said, for the most part, I would always recommend th that applications get their own and and an application could have multiple developers, but if you have multiple applications, they should all have their own. Um, their own OAuth token, and depending on the OAuth flow that you're using, you you're going to have multiple users that are coming through and potentially identifying themselves through the application to to authenticate themselves to actually use the API. Does that answer your question? Absolutely, absolutely. So we we have inside of the gateway. So if we go back to our API manager, um, no, I don't want to go to API manager. I actually want to go to what we call gateway manager UI. So we actually have what we call admin node manager that's pulling those metrics from the gateway constantly. So if we come out here and we take a look at our and we come out to gateway manager and we log into this guy So by default here on the dashboard, what we're going to see is immediately what you're going to see is you're going to see traffic that's being that's being called. So if we come back to our API here and we say, let's execute this guy a couple more times. It's not going to work because I changed it, remember. Um, but but here in our dashboard, you can see, so here, total messages passed, right? And, and then you see blocked and exceptions. But what you can also see here really quickly is you'll be able to see some of API services, uh, your top services and clients and, and stuff that's going to call. And then inside of API Manager, you also have some metrics that you're going to be able to use, look at and now here, what you're going to be able to see is you're going to be able to see how much your application usage or your API usage here. And what you can do is you can drive drive down here and say, <clears throat> um, if I choose my OMS, right? And then I say apply. So now this changes and shows me my OMS. But what I can do now is I can drive down and I can see what's going on on a per method um, a per method process, right? 
And then we also have, we also have embedded analytics. Oh, that's not running. Um, so embedded analytics comes and it, it, it shows you uh, a little bit more deeper um, looks that you can see. But by default here, you know, your, your developers are going to be out here using this to see in how much their API is actually being used and called. And all of these, all of these can be exported out too. And you can load these into third-party analytical tools like Splunk, Elkstack, um, Grafana, Prometheus, Kafka. Uh, they, they can all be downloaded and, and outputted to that. Okay, answer your question, hopefully. Absolutely. Uh, so that's all we that's all we select we support is SSO using SAML tokens. Uh, so any 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 third party or any third party that you're using that that supports the SAML tokens can be set up as a as an authentication mechanism for API manager and API portal. Okay, we get just a couple more minutes left. Anybody else have any other questions? Well, nobody has any questions. I just want to thank you for uh, joining and spending some time with me. Um, if you have any other questions, of course, we do have a virtual booth that you can go out to at any time. And then we did have two of our catalysts that did talks yesterday on APIs. Hopefully you guys were able to join those. Okay, that's the end of this session. I will go ahead and hit leave and I believe that's all I need to do.